Wow, what a beautiful day. The sun is red, the sky is blue, just dancing in the light. And why do you think such is the sight? I have no clue. And allow me to enlighten you. The Earth's atmosphere is a heterogeneous mixture of minute particles. These minute particles may include such as smoke, tiny water droplets, suspended dust particles and other molecules of air. Now when such particles are present in the atmosphere, a beam of light that is coming from the sun, it interacts with these particles, reflects diffusively and then it reaches us, giving us the visibility of the path of the beam of light. So this phenomena of scattering of light with the colloidal particles that are minute particles is known as Tyndall effect. Now this phenomena you might have seen in your daily lives where one such example would be a friend Anshul was sitting beside a window and he saw this beautiful sun rays that are passing through the window. Now he could able to see those sun rays because the light rays were interacting with the dust particles that are present in his room. Now this is one example for the Tyndall effect. Another example would be the Amazon rainforest which is more lively. Now in this Amazon rainforest it is having a canopy of trees which prevents the sunlight from reaching the ground. Now, some of the rays are able to reach the ground through some pinholes or some minute holes present in the canopy. Now, when those rays are entering the canopy, those rays interact with the tiny minute particles which are the water droplets present in its line of path. So, when it interacts with those particles, it reflects diffusely and then it reaches the eye giving us the visibility of the path of the light. So, these were some of the examples for the Tyndall effect. Instead of just blabbering about this effect, about how it happens and where it happens and how beautiful and all that is, why don't we just create and see with our own eyes? Let's just go to my lab and figure this out. So here we are guys. Are you excited to see this effect? But first let me tell you what are the apparatus involved. So these are the two beakers which we'll be filling them with water. And this is the laser light which is the most important part of this experiment where we need to see the path of this laser light. And here we need an impurity or a dense solution. So here I'm using a milkmaid solution which we'll be putting it in the beaker and then we'll see the effect happen. But first to see the effect more clearly, we need to turn off the lights first. Alright, let's bring on the laser light. Now as you can see, we are not able to see the path of the laser light in the two beakers. Let's add some milkmaid solution to the second beaker. Let's add few drops of it. You can see that we are starting to see some path of the laser light. And let's mix it evenly. Now isn't that a beautiful view? So this is how you create the Tyndall effect in your own backyard. Now important point that you have to note here is that whatever the light that has scattered, the color of that scattered light depends on the size of the scattering particle. Confusing right? See, a white light consists of seven colors, which is the visible spectrum, right? Violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, and red, right? So these are the seven colors that are present in the spectrum. Now, if the size of the particle is very small or very minute, then the blue end of the spectrum gets scattered more. And if the size of the particle is very large enough, then the scattering of the light happens on the red end of the spectrum. That is, we see the red color of the light more prominently. So this is how the scattering of light or the color of the scattering light depends on the size of the particle that is present in its path. So with this understanding, can we answer one basic question that we have neglected to ask in our everyday life? That is, why is the sky blue in color? Now the minute particles in the atmosphere that we have discussed in the beginning, they are so small that they scatter light only on the blue end of the spectrum because those particles are much smaller than the wavelength of the blue end of the spectrum. So it is unable to scatter light on the red end of the spectrum because they have a wavelength of 1.8 times greater than the wavelength of the blue end of the spectrum. So when this light enters through the atmosphere, it only scatters the blue light and that light is visible to us and that is why the sky is blue in color. So by now it is very clear that whatever the effect that we are seeing, whether it is the sky being blue or the visibility of the sun rays, 
it is all due to the presence of the atmosphere on the earth's surface now a natural question might arise if there is a planet where there is no atmosphere at all where one such case would be our very own moon where the gravity is very less and hence there is no atmosphere at all then how would be the effect over there well let me tell you what you won't be seeing any effect on the moon as you have seen the effects on the earth because there there is no atmosphere present and the scattering of light is only possible if there is an atmosphere so you cannot see any such beautiful phenomena happening on the earth's surface on any other planet because you need a perfect atmosphere like this to see such beautiful phenomena so it would be like watching a torch in a dark room like this now you might have observed another thing that people use this red color for danger signals now this is because we have already learned that the red color is the least scattered light in the whole visible spectrum so whatever color that you see here there is a red color it is also visible in the same color at a very long distance so if you want to caution people who are about to be in an accident or you have to caution them in a very different manner then this color light is the most useful light because whatever color that you are presenting here is also visible in the same shade at a very far distance another phenomena related to the scattering of light is the orange sky and the reddish color sun we have already learned that in the atmosphere there are minute particles present and depending upon the size of the particles different colors of the light get scattered the most so now when the sun is right above our head then the sunlight has to travel the least amount of distance to reach the earth's surface through the atmosphere so we have already learned that as the atmosphere contains tiny minute particles then it scatters the blue end of the spectrum so that is why we see the color of the sky as blue and the remaining color of the spectrum that has scattered the least they reach our eye and we see the color of the sun as yellow or white in color all right now when the sun is at the horizon there it has to travel or the light has to travel a longer distance through the atmosphere so when the light is traveling through such large distance through the atmosphere there even the green and the yellow light get scattered away and only the orange and the reddish reach our eye and that is why we see the color of the sky as orangish in the evenings and the color of the sun as red enough with all the explanations and all the examples that we have seen let's just see whether we can create the scene in our own backyard lab let's go and find it out so here we are again guys now let me tell you first what are the apparatus involved so this is the torch light which is our main point of observation and this is the rectangular tub where we'll be filling it with water and then see what are the things that are happening in this tub and we'll also be using a milkmaid solution which forms a dense solution if you add it into this water and then we can see what are the changes that are happening in the path of the light so let's begin this activity but first let's turn off the lights and then see it clearly so as you can see i have added water into the tub and we have placed the torch light behind this tub and now we are going to add the milkmaid solution into this water and as you can see when the solution is added the color of the light is changing a bit right so to see it more clearly and evenly we'll stir this whole solution continuously until it changes into a different color all right so let's add few more drops and then stir it so we can see that there is a small change in the color right so let's add few more drops and bring out a significant change so now it has turned to a yellow color solution and it seems like a sunlight right let's add few more and now it's more clearly visible yes so this is what we are trying to get the color of the light is changing when the light is interacting with the minute particles that are present in this whole solution so let's add few more and let's do this continuously until we find out the red color of this torch light okay let's add few more drops and stir it nicely you can see it turning into a red color now it's orange let's add more and let's bring out the real color so this is the color that we are trying to get right it's a dense solution right and in the top view you can see that the blue light is scattered and in the front view only the red color is visible wow 
such is the beauty of nature and much is the understanding behind it yeah 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 enough with the poetry now tell me what have we learned so the earth's atmosphere is a heterogeneous mixture composed of minute particles the phenomenon of scattering of light by colloidal particles gives rise to tyndall effect very fine particles scatter only blue light while larger particles scatter light of longer wavelengths so the sky appears blue because fine particles scatter blue light more during sunset near the horizon most of the shorter wavelengths or the blue light gets scattered away and the light that remains like the orange light or the red light reaches our eyes and hence the reddish color of the sun